<sighs> Are you tired of playing the same boring old games? Do you wish you could play new games without ever leaving the couch? Absolutely. Well then, tighten your belt buckle, Tom, because we've got something for you. Introducing the Sega Channel. Now you can play all of your favorite games without ever having to make a trip to the boring old game store. This is awesome! New games sent to your Genesis every month for just $15. <laughs> Forget cartridges, no one needs those anymore. Regular TV was then, the Sega Channel is now. So strap in and don't forget to breathe. Welcome to Game Rats. With the popularity of services such as PlayStation Now and Xbox Game Pass on the rise, we thought we would take a look at Sega's pioneering service that set the template for all of the games on demand services that followed, the Sega Channel. The Sega Channel was launched in December of 1994. While marketed as a channel, the service was actually one of the first attempts at bringing online gaming to the home console market. The Sega Channel gave Genesis owners access to a rotating selection of monthly games, new game demos, and cheat codes. There's no way I could play all these games if it wasn't for Sega Channel. The subscription model for the Sega Channel was similar to that of other premium cable networks like HBO. Cable subscribers would simply call their provider and they would request the Sega Channel. Once the channel was ordered, new subscribers would be charged an initial $25 activation fee. This fee included the Genesis Sega Channel adapter. The adapter plugged into the Genesis cartridge slot, just like a normal game. You would then plug in the coaxial cable and the power supply to the unit. That's right, it had its own separate power supply. If you were an owner of the Sega CD and the 32X, you would have had a total of four massive power bricks to plug in. Games were downloaded directly onto the Sega Channel adapter's onboard 4 megabit RAM and would only remain downloaded as long as the system was powered on. Some games like Sonic 3D Blast had to be separated into multiple parts since the full game was just too large to fit onto the adapter's internal memory. Since content was updated each month for the Sega Channel, cable providers had to ensure that their signal was clean and clear of any noise in order to prevent their customers from having download interruptions. So in some ways, we actually have Sega to thank for the broadband internet that we use to surf the web today. The Sega Channel could host up to 50 games at a time. The home menu of the channel would separate titles based on genre, with categories such as test drives for demos, arcade for more action-oriented titles like Contra Hardcore, and puzzlers. I can even play columns on the Sega Channel? The Sega Channel even had a few exclusive games that were never physically released in North America, most notably Mega Man The Wily Wars, which was a Genesis remake of the first three NES Mega Man games. If you want to play this one today, you'll have to import, buy a homebrew cart, or resort to emulation. And what if you wanted to play Golden Axe 3 in North America? You had to either import or subscribe to the Sega Channel. It's very economical, especially with a household kid. All said and done, the Sega Channel was yet another groundbreaking effort from Sega that simply came out at the wrong time. While moderately successful, it never really took off the way that Sega had intended. Several factors led to the demise of the service, the first of which is Sega itself, which is a running theme throughout many of the company's blunders. The Sega Channel launched late in the Genesis life cycle, and in addition to the Genesis, Sega was already supporting the Game Gear, the Sega CD, and even the Master System in some regions. These four systems and the imminent release of the 32X and the Sega Saturn pushed many consumers away from subscribing to the Sega Channel. Second, the monthly subscription fee was just too high for most people. $15 a month may not seem like much by today's standards, but by 1993 standards, $15 was a lot. The average monthly cable bill at the time cost between $20 to $25. 
At its peak, the Sega channel was able to reach 250,000 subscribers. The service was discontinued on July 31st of 1998. Though not entirely successful, the Sega channel certainly holds a pivotal place in video game history. It paved the way for online console gaming, digital downloads, and gaming on demand services as we know them today. What are your thoughts on the Sega channel? Did you have a subscription when it was available? Let us know! And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to check back every week for new content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Sorry about all the broken games, Tom. Things just didn't work out. What am I supposed to play now? You blew up all the ding ding games. No. No. No! Ding.